is buying houses with cryptocurrency overrated or underrated in today's climate? Wow. I, uh, so buy, buying a house with cryptocurrency uh, overrated or underrated. Um, Mike, will you want to you want to kick this one off? You want to have me talk on cryptocurrency? <laughs> <laughs> so that's not your thing. That's right? not my jam, okay. man. I'm gonna let, okay. I'm gonna stay in my lane. All right. So <laughs> the the uh, the second uh, uh, other than my other than my family, the uh, the second <laughs> love in my life, cryptocurrency. Um, so underrated overrated if i'm a seller i would take that deal i guess it depends on what i'm being what what uh what cryptocurrency i'm being offered and at what time but i would take that deal and the reason i'm gonna take i would take uh a transaction in cryptocurrency in 2021 at least is uh because of the debasing value of cash versus the accelerating appreciation of cryptocurrency through right. the remainder of the year right. so as we as a country print more and more money right now 40 percent of the monetary supply has been printed since the pandemic okay so in that wow. and that's historical 40 percent wow. ever wow okay so think about what happened when um now the government can argue that there's no inflation and they're lying um so add that to another lie you're being told um it the, feels like the, it to the, me right I just went to Subway. It was twenty five dollars for yeah, two sandwiches. That's right. So, so inflation does. <laughs> inflation may not exist, but the cost of consumables Dude. drastically exists. Right. So re realize that the government Subway, chooses twenty five dollars. Jeez, dude, that's crazy. Realize that the government chooses what they include in their inflation basket to calculate that. So the cost of TVs has gone down from the first flat screen TV I bought. Right. Okay, great. However, the cost of the $5 foot long is no longer no. $5, <laughs> as it sounds like. So, um, so <laughs> innovation and technology caused the cost of some goods to go down. However, the monetary printing makes the dollar worth less and therefore drives the price of consumer goods. And, and, Every house I own has gone up um, at least 25% in the last two years, right? And so thankfully, um, that's a good thing for those that own assets. The challenge is, is those that do not own assets um, are not getting ahead. Yeah. And so the reason why I would be willing to say and why I'm 100% bought in on cash is trash is because of the debasing of the monetary system right now. It's estimated that cash is losing its value to the tune of 15% a year so your dollar is actually getting about 80 to 80 to 85 percent equivalent of where it was pre-pandemic i believe it and um you know what your wages aren't going up though by that equivalent amount either which is why we see this massive wealth divide continuing to to grow and so where where cryptocurrency comes in to solve that problem when we look at the initial um satoshi nakamoto white paper of why um you know, cryptocurrencies were even founded, it was because of the 2008 global financial crisis, because banks, the intermediary third party, were manipulating the monetary system in order to quant do quantitative easing, printing, right. um, you, you know, you could do, um, you know, just verbal uh, pre-approvals. Yep. Well, the, the technology around cryptocurrency doesn't allow for the manipulation of the system. Right. And so um, the best returning asset for the last 13 years is cryptocurrency, period. Not even close. 212% yeah. annualized growth rate for the last wow. 12 years. So if you're asking me, would I rather have cash that's losing its value to the tune of 15% right now annually or a 212% appreciating asset? It's a very clear non-decision that I'll take that in uh, a reputable cryptocurrency all day long, every day. What he said. That's, <laughs> that's what I, I feel I, like we just got like, he's been yeah. just, I don't, it's been like percolating in his head. He just needs like an outlet to just let all that that's out. Right, dude. <laughs> that's right. He said something about some white papers and I, who, whose white papers are those? <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's, uh, it, it's crazy when you, if you go down the rabbit hole where, it, where you start to really question everything you yeah. thought about money yeah. before and what you have to do though is you have to silence the noise of the mainstream media and the masses because it is 
such a complex topic when you think about it, when you think from the perspective of what you know as an American, you're thinking incredibly limited. And we only know money in the U.S. dollar equivalent. However, you know, when you think about it, 40% of the global population is unbanked. And we're a pretty global society. Right. Africa, as a, as a majority, has no access to a reliable banking system. And, and the technology behind cryptocurrency is able to solve a lot of that problem yeah. because it's peer-to-peer -peer lending right. where you can trust that when I tell you I have $2 equivalent, that I haven't also given my $2 to Tyler and to Kate. Right. The, I only have $2. If, when we think about the global financial crisis of, of 08 and 09, um, people were lending money that didn't have money because there's a intermediary third party who has an incentive to get paid to manipulate the validity of our transaction. Software doesn't have a decentralized software doesn't have the ability to be corruptible like that. So if I tell you that I have the money for a down payment, it's the there. system knows if I have yeah. the money for a down payment or not. Yeah. The mortgage process, while significantly improved in the last 10 years, still is corruptible comparatively.